what do you guys think is going to happen with Kevin Holland? I, I, I ask you from this perspective. Do you think he's going to be able to plug the holes in his game? Look at it like that. And now that that has been exposed, and everybody gets exposed over time, some guys' holes are a lot smaller. Some guys' holes are more glaring. But everybody gets exposed. And I only bring that to you because this isn't a pick on Hev Kevin Holland. Kevin Hall is a guy that nobody knew who's now a main eventer. A multiple time main eventer. I mean, Kevin Hall has done a great job in the sport. If anybody's had a meteoric rise, but because of that, because of all eyeballs on him, we're starting to see, study, and break down some of the deficiencies that he's had. And now that we've seen it twice in a row, what do we make of that? Well, I would stop you right there only to tell you this. We haven't seen the same problem twice in a row. Not in a fair perspective because they were back-to-back. -back. I don't know if that was two five-round fights or if that was one 10-round fight in, in the vein that they were back-to-back. -back. When Kevin learned against Brunson that he's got some problems with positions, that first off, the takedown need, uh, defense has got to offer more resistance. Second off, the scrambles from the bottom have to be an emphasis way before your triangles and arm bars. And third, and by far most importantly, you cannot beat good guys from your back. Doesn't happen. You're not, you don't win main events from your back. You can win them on the ground. You can't win them from your back. And there's a difference. I would like to point that out. I am a black belt in jujitsu, and I had some people of my own community who thought I was bad mouthing jujitsu. You can think whatever you want about jujitsu. I don't give a damn. As soon as you have a sweat, jujitsu's out the door. It's the reason they don't do it unless you're wearing a gi, just so you understand. So if that hurts your feelings, check your feelings somewhere else. Facts don't care about your feelings. And secondly, show me a main event where somebody won on the ground from their back, that's what I'm offering. Let's say you can't get on top of somebody, he's ready to go when you put in a choke. From the top, I'm talking about from your back in a main event. And I know you could bring me examples. You could, you could, la you could laugh in my face and say, Chael, I saw Anderson do it to you. I understand these things. I'm sharing with you, that was 2009. It was a rarity. And I'm talking about in today's world. Kevin Holland represents the new age of fighter. And main event guys don't win from their back. It's a broad stroke statement. But it's also a lesson that you want to take away with. There's people that are hired. It is solely their job. I'm a big wrestling fan. But USA Wrestling, we do it every year. One person's job. World championship happens. They go into the office, into a room alone, and lock themselves in there for about a month. And they watch every single match in every single weight class. And they take notes at the world and Olympic level. How many takedowns happened in the entire tournament? Great. How many of those were a single? How many of those were a high crotch? How many of those were a double? Great. When people scored on top, were they scoring with a Turk, with a bow and arrow, with a leg lace, with a gut wrench? And they will break these things down. So once you study those numbers and you start to see where the high percentage techniques are, that should guide you in the direction if you have world and Olympic aspirations. When I tell you that you do not win in a main event from your back, I'm right. No matter how much you want to believe that laying there and being lazy should be rewarded or is rewarded, it's not. Numbers don't lie. And I bring this to you because I don't think that Kevin Holland has failed twice at the same thing. I really don't. I think it was in such a short period of time. It's reasonable to understand after what we saw Brunson do that Kevin now knows what he needs to work on. I submit for you, he didn't have time to work on it. So I submit for you between Brunson and Vittori, we saw very good things from Kevin Holland that the haters don't want to admit. But we saw a guy dig deep. We saw a guy enter the five-round club. We saw a guy who never gave up in championship rounds, never gave up at any point. We saw a guy who was pretty wild and ready to go on his feet. And by the way, some of the most effective striking you're ever going to see is pretty wild striking from guys who are just ready to go. It's not by the numbers. <laughs> you're throwing. 
That's the stuff that lands. That's the stuff that sticks. That's the stuff that's hard to see. I see Kevin Holland. I see a great product here. But I see a guy who's going to need to work on this grappling business. But it's a three-pronged approach, and he's got to understand all three. It can't just be offer resistance to takedowns. Okay, problem solved. No, wrong. Wrong. If you can scramble up off the bottom, in many ways, that's more effective. If you stuff a takedown, the fight goes on. If you get taken down and you get up off the bottom, your opponent's now done. That will break him mentally. And I will tell you this as a wrestler. If we go through the energy to exert, to take somebody down, which is the most energy you can use for any single technique within all of the unified rules, we must have a second to hold you there. We must be able to get a couple of breaths back. And if you go down, you cause a scramble, and you pop back to your feet, the wrestler has now exerted energy, and he's stuck in the same spot that he admittedly did not want to be in, which is why he attempted to take you down in the first place. It's paramount that you can get off the bottom. And ultimately, from a mindset, you got to know you're not going to win a fight against the good guys from your back. Period. Period. You're not going to win a fight from your back. So what does that mean? If you're a ground fighter, what's that mean? It means do the Damian Maya and get the damn reversal. People love to talk about how many fights Damian Maya has won off their back. Those people have short-term memories. Very, very few. Maya goes to his back and instantly sets up a half guard what? Sweep. Reversal. Gets him on top. He's still on the ground. He's a ground fighter. But he's now on top. That's completely different jujitsu. You now have position. Effective jujitsu in MMA goes in two orders, but it goes in this order. Position, submission. In grappling, it can be submission followed by position, not in MMA. It is position first, then submit. You got to get on top. So when we look at some of the holes in Kevin's boat, and these are the only two that we've seen. We've seen him seven times in the last... 14 months. That's a lot of times. And we've only identified one bad thing. And you're going to come out bad mouth Kevin Holland to me. How? Out of seven fights at a weight class that he says he doesn't even want to compete in, we found one whole man. That sounds like Kevin's done a pretty goddamn good job to me. I feel like I could watch any other fighter fight seven times and I could bring you more than one air that they're making. I, I really feel like that. With Kevin, I've seen him fight seven times. I see one problem. Kevin's talking about going to go and train with DC. I don't know that anybody knows the sport better. Maybe a couple of people as well. I, I don't know that anybody knows the sport better than Daniel Cormier. And I've seen Daniel coach. I will also share with you, I'm not sure anybody can communicate and teach the sport better than Daniel Cormier. So if Holland says that's what he's going to do, I think he's in great hands. I would encourage Kevin in the meanwhile to not believe he has to start with the master. Or if I, if I want to learn boxing, I don't need to go spar with Wilder today. I need to work my way into that. And I only bring you that because to learn wrestling at a late age, you have to do one thing. You have to, which is humble yourself. And you want to know why? You want to know why? It's not like an art, like where you got to bow and it's about humility. No, excuse me. All the wrestling gyms that you're going to find, you're going to have to go to a junior high if they have a program. A local high school likely will have a program. You can attach yourself to a community college that allow you in the room, or you're going to have to go to a summer camp, which, by the way, is largely done by kids. What's that mean? That means you're the big bad guy fighting on ESPN on Saturday night. You're about to get your ass kicked by some children. It's the reality. Until you know what you're doing in wrestling, until you understand some of those basics, get your hips back, arms come inside, cross face, peel away. Until you understand these things, you're going to lose to some children, which is why you must humble yourself. I watched Randy Couture as the heavyweight champion of the world go into a high school room every single day and wrestle. It kept him fresh. It kept him sharp. But it's also the secret to Randy's longevity. It wasn't good vitamins, luck, DNA. It was none of those things. He trained with the kids. Nobody could pass him up. So next generation comes along, they just pass you up. Your knowledge that was new and cutting edge is now old. That's just, that's just sport. Never happened to Randy because he always trained with the kids. 
He trained with that next generation. But I want to bring you this point because Kevin Holland, to learn rest, to learn wrestling is tough. Look, you want to learn karate, go grab the yellow pages and flip through it. You'll find a school. Go ahead and go in there. You want to learn Taekwondo, go get to an internet, type it in, man. A gym will pop up. You, there's no such thing in wrestling. There is no gym in wrestling. There is no studio. There is no come sign up and be here tomorrow at three. It doesn't exist. It exists in the schools and the schools exist with the youth, which means, yes, you're going to go take some beatings from juniors, from sophomores. It's tough. It's tough. But if it was a good enough strategy for Randy Couture, it's a good enough strategy for you. And I only offer that to you because from what I know of Kevin Holland, he's brave. He's ferocious. He's fun. He's charismatic. I don't know if he's humble. I don't know. I don't know. He probably doesn't know. He's probably not been in this situation. But that's the one thing tough about wrestling that people never understand. Why can a wrestler come over and learn boxing? Why can a boxer come over and not learn wrestling? Because the boxer doesn't have anywhere to learn it. People don't understand this concept. It's not that they're different levels of athletes. It's that you can go sign up for boxing anywhere. You can only get wrestling in an institution. Nobody else wrestles. So now you got to humble yourself. You go talk to the coach. You got to introduce yourself. Go find yourself a pair of shoes and you got to show up every day on time. And they're long and hard practices and you're going to get whipped by some kids. It's a tough thing to learn wrestling. You could do it if you want, but it's a tough thing to learn. Adversely, you cannot just fly out, even to the master of Daniel Cormier, because Daniel will watch you and he will guide you and he will instruct you, but he's going to make you wrestle with the only people that do, the kids. 